Next up, an important piece of terminology that comes up all the time in JavaScript. There's a million blog posts and YouTube videos written about callbacks. Callbacks are simply functions that are passed into other functions to be invoked within the outer function. So we've already done this, we've seen it, we just didn't call it a callback. If we go back to this example, call twice, we wrote a function call twice, which accepts a single function and it executes it two times. In this example, the function we pass in, laugh, is a callback. It is called within this outer function call twice. So anytime we pass a function to another function and it's executed in that function, we would call it a callback. And callbacks are extremely, extremely common in JavaScript. We can write code like we did here. We can write our own function that accepts callbacks, but also tons of the built-in methods, the really useful ones in JavaScript, expect you to pass in a callback. If you want to make a request to load data from Facebook's API, that request takes time we pass in a callback function that will be called when the request is finished, when the data is back. If we want to run code when a user clicks on a button on a page or when they hover over a photo, the code that we write to set that up requires us to pass in a callback function, which will be executed when the user hovers or when the user clicks. So in this video, I just want to show you some of that. This is not the one video on callbacks. This is an intro to the general concept. Then in the next couple sections, we'll see tons of them. There are lots of built-in array methods. and We're gonna spend a good amount of time covering them. They all accept callbacks. So it's not some foreign crazy concept. We've already been doing it. We just haven't been using the term callback. This is the callback, the function that we pass in. The one thing that we haven't talked about as much with callbacks or with higher order functions is that often we use anonymous functions when we call them. We pass in an anonymous function rather than an existing function like laugh. There's nothing wrong with this, but sometimes we just need a, a one-time use function. We don't need it to be a standalone function, in which case we use an anonymous function. I'm saying function a lot, it's starting to sound weird to me, but let me show you an example of something we haven't seen. In JavaScript, there is a method called set timeout. Set timeout will run a certain block of code or a function of code after a certain number of milliseconds or seconds. We pass in a number of milliseconds like 5,000, which is five seconds. But the first argument we need to pass it is a function. So a function to run and then how long to wait before it runs. If you look at the documentation on MDN, this first argument is called function in this case, a function to be executed after the timer expires that's what we need to pass in, like function grumpus, our good old grumpus function. But instead of console.logging, let's do something more obvious. We will alert. If you don't remember alert, pass in something in here like gibberish. I'll go over to my actual browser window where it is, and I get an alert. It pops up. One of the most irritating things ever when a website actually uses alerts. I don't recommend you do it. But it's more obvious, easier for us to see compared to a console.log. I'll alert something like, God, go away. And then if I wanted to call this function after 5,000 milliseconds, I could pass it in right here using a name, Grumpus. That's the name of my function. And if I run this code, I'll refresh my page. I have the browser page open. After five milliseconds or five seconds, almost there, there we go. It alerts. So what we've seen is that set timeout accepts a function. This is not a function we wrote, set timeout. It comes in the browser for free. It's built in. It expects us to pass in a function and a number of milliseconds. And in our example, we wrote a function and passed it in, but we can also do it in line using an anonymous function. So remember these anonymous functions look like this function and then no name. It's just function. And this is a way of saying, after 5,000 milliseconds, run this chunk of code. It doesn't have a name. I'm not going to use it anywhere else. If I simply wanted to say alert, welcome, this is a one-time thing. I don't need this to be a reusable function that I can call over and over somewhere else. Then I don't have to make it a reusable function. I don't have to make it a named function or save it to a variable. I can just pass in this function expression. And this is a very common pattern. Set timeout not the set timeout part, but passing in an anonymous function to another function. So we'll see this quite a bit. This function will be called after 5,000 seconds, 5,000 milliseconds. 
I should have done 3,000. 5,000 takes a little bit too long. Don't know what to say. Okay, there it is. This page says, welcome. So that's one example. I'm gonna show you another example. This one's a little bit more advanced. It involves some stuff we haven't seen before, but it's also a bit more exciting. We're going to write some code that will run when we click a button on the page. So we need to add a button, first of all. So in our HTML page, we'll add a button inside the body. We haven't covered anything around DOM manipulation events, so this is a preview of something we'll spend a lot of time on later on in the course. But I'll add a button here that says, don't click me. And then something I need to do that's important is move my script tag down to the end of my body because this script needs to run after all of the content has loaded, after the button is on the page. If I left it here, it would run first before the button was on the page. Now again, the takeaway here is not the actual syntax, it's not the methods, the code I'm gonna show you, it's the pattern of passing in a callback. So in order to run code when this button is clicked, I need to start by selecting it. This is something we will spend time on later on, so don't get hung up on it, but I'll make a variable called btn, and I'm going to select that button, document.querySelector, pass in a string of button. And this will select the button for me that was here. Now the way I run code when we click on that button is by calling a method called addEventListener on the button. I'm going to listen for a click. And then this second part is the most important piece. This is a function to run when the button is clicked. So we could define a separate function like Grumpus and I could pass that in right here. Then when I click on that button, Grumpus will be called. We can play around with it. Here's my button. Oh, I get an error because I didn't uncomment Grumpus. Try that again. Refresh the page. I click. I get my alert. And this approach works if we needed Grumpus somewhere else, if we wanted to do something with it. But if this is just a one-time thing, I'm only using it here, I can add in an anonymous function. This is my callback function. Grumpus was a callback as well. This is a different callback. This one is anonymous and I'll alert. Why did you click me? And if we test this out, refresh the page, click. Why did you click me? Don't panic about any of this syntax. Query selector, document, add event listener. Just worry about this part. We're passing in a function, just like we did right here. We pass a function into another function and the typical pattern you'll see a lot is to use an anonymous function. Rather than declaring it and giving it a name, if you don't need to reuse it, if you don't need to do that, it's a one-time thing, just pass it in as an anonymous function. In fact, this is such a common thing that there is an even shorter way of doing this, a shorter syntax that we'll see in the next section. So this is just an intro to callbacks, the idea of passing a function in to another function. The term that describes this function we pass in is callback. All right, 